In this video, we're gonna be taking a first look at the Xtool F1 Ultra. I've had the privilege of getting my hands on this machine prior to the official release date, so I'm able to share it with you guys. Right now, Xtool is running a pre-release sale where you can save $1,000 on the F1 Ultra. Check the video description down below for the link to this offer. Now, normally in my videos, I run through the entire process of completing a large array of example workpieces all in one video, but those videos end up becoming really long. This time around, I'm gonna take a different approach and we'll cover the unboxing and setup first, talk about the features, and then in the next video, we'll run some jobs. And if you haven't yet seen the Xtool F1 Ultra, it is Xtool's latest dual laser machine with a 20 watt blue laser and a 20 watt fiber laser for maximum flexibility when processing materials. More on that and all of the finer details later in the features section of this video. For now, let's get started unboxing this thing. I've unboxed quite a few Xtool products by now, and they always do a great job with the packaging, so despite my local courier's best efforts to beat this box up, I was very confident that everything inside would be in great condition. In addition to making sure that your new machine gets to you safely, I've also noticed in the past that Xtool does a very nice job with the presentation of their products inside of the packaging as well. We'll start by opening the thin suitcase sized cardboard box with the handle, where you'll find a material sample pack, the instruction manual, the slatted panel for through cuts, the power supply and power supply cable, as well as the exhaust hose. And as you can imagine, the big and very well protected item inside of the box is the F1 Ultra itself. You'll wanna lift it out of the box using the two large Velcro straps as handles, and then you can remove the large pieces of foam. The F1 Ultra is further protected from scratches and scuffs with a protective layer of plastic film, and the rest of the accessories are nested inside of the machine and to access those you'll need to remove the pieces of tape along the side of the cover and that will allow us to now lift the cover up and slide out these accessories. They are very snugly tucked inside of the machine and they are stacked like little drawers and you can pull away the foam and then slide out the cardboard boxes. Once you slide the bottom drawer out the top one will just simply fall down and you can slide that one out as well and it's got a sticker on top reminding you to remove the lens cover, which we'll get to later. Inside of these two boxes, you'll find some key components. The first one being the touchscreen controller. I have not seen anything like this yet on any of the previous Xtool machines that I've owned, so this is pretty exciting. It's got a really nice fit and finish to it, and it matches the aesthetics of the machine. In the second box, we've got a bunch of tools and accessories. The first one being the other half of the power cord. The second one being a screwdriver, the third being a lens cleaning cloth, the fourth being the USB cable to link up to your laptop or computer, the fifth being the USB lockout keys, and last one being a material positioning bracket. I also have the button and pedal switch. Neither of these come standard with the F1 Ultra. However, they are compatible accessories, and as I understand it, they're backwards compatible with machines like the regular F1 as well. They look like really nice quality, and if you happen to put your machine in a hard to reach place, I would imagine that these will make starting your jobs easier, as you'll be able to use the button or the pedal to interface with your Xtool F1 Ultra. The machine setup is really straightforward as there is nothing to assemble. It's more a matter of getting familiar with the various ports and buttons and getting everything plugged in. The first one being the USB lockout key. The machine will not run without this. And then we can plug in our power supply at the back. On the far right hand side, there's a tube port for the fire safety set. And then there are three USB style ports. From right to left, the first one would be for controlling the fire safety set, the one in the middle for controlling the smoke purifier, and the one on the left would be the input for things like the pedal or button switch that I just showed you guys. For now, I'm not going to be using either of those switches because I will have the machine at arm's length, and I'll be using the touchscreen controller. It has this circular plug that is keyed so you can't plug it in the wrong way, and you'll just need to thread it on to secure the connection. Now, as far as I can tell, this controller is just intended to sit somewhere beside the machine, somehow flat on the table, but I wasn't entirely happy with that, so I decided to create this controller mount and stand. You can find it on my website, embracemaking.com, and it can be used in two ways. So this first way is using it as a pedestal stand. 
The bottom pedestal base has four non-slip feet and you can use the included hardware to attach the cradle to the base. These two screws are just thread forming screws so they'll thread themselves directly into the plastic base and now you have a really nice solution for displaying and accessing your F1 Ultra controller on your tabletop. Now this looks pretty good but perhaps you have limited real estate available on your workbench and instead you want to use it in the second configuration and for this you'll need to remove the front handle on the F1 Ultra. You'll need to remove the two screws on the inside of the front cover. They're in there pretty tight so the first time you go to remove them be sure not to strip them and once you remove them you can reuse them to thread into the two female threads at the back of the cradle and this will attach the cradle to the front of your machine and you'll also notice that I removed the pedestal base in this configuration. This saves a bit of space on your table, the controller is still removable, and it's always easily accessible from the front of your machine. Returning to the back of the F1 Ultra, we have one more thing to address, and that is the exhaust port. The 3 inch flexible hose that comes with the F1 Ultra friction fits onto the back port, but the question becomes what to do with the other side. On my website embracemaking.com, I have various solutions for fume and smoke exhaust ventilation, like this 3 inch to 4 inch adapter. The 3 inch flexible hose will fit snugly on top of the adapter and then you can take your 4 inch hose, put it on the other side and use a hose clamp on top of that. Personally, I like using 4 inch or 100 millimeter ductwork because it's compatible with these very large inline fans. The model that I have here features a speed controller with 10 different speeds and a very convenient remote. I'll put a link to this model in the video description down below, as well as a link to the three inch to four inch hose adapter. I've routed the exhaust out my window and I created this custom window frame panel with a piece of wood where the outside edges are sealed with rubber garage door seal. This setup is working quite well for me, but if you don't have a window or door nearby and you're looking to filter your exhaust, Xtool also offers a fume filtration system which I'll also link to down in the video description below, along with a link to an air quality sensor if you're looking to monitor the safety of your workspace. And with that out of the way, one of the final things you need to do before getting started with the F1 Ultra is popping off the lens cover and turning the machine on. And to do that, you need to release the emergency stop button by rotating it and perhaps even pressing the silver button down at the bottom. My button was already in the on position, so I didn't need to press it. And you'll find when you first turn it on, that you'll likely see a firmware update. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm gonna be running example jobs in a future video. So for now, let's take a look at the features. And the first thing we'll do is have a quick look at the new F1 Ultra compared to its predecessor, the original F1. Right away, you'll notice that it's much larger and there is no longer a handle at the top of the machine as this one isn't very portable anymore. The workspace is considerably larger at 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 150 millimeters tall, and there is no removable pass-through window on the F1 Ultra. If you own the original F1 and have purchased my fixtures and plan on upgrading to the F1 Ultra, I have an adapter to reuse your old fixtures. The adapter should fit fixtures from other brands as well as long as they fit into the original F1 pass-through window. The next key feature is the dual laser. Now, similar to the original F1, we have a blue laser, but this time it's 20 watts instead of the regular F1's 10 watts. More impressive though is the second laser on the F1 Ultra, and it's a 20 watt fiber laser, whereas the original F1 only had a two watt IR laser. The significantly more powerful fiber laser technology will allow you to cut and engrave much deeper into metals, and I think that is going to be one of the main attractions of this machine. The combination of the two lasers means you have maximum flexibility for materials, everything from plastics to metals, leather, wood, and more. The F1 Ultra also boasts galvanometer technology, so you do not have the limitations associated with traditional gantry-style laser machines. It should also be highly accurate, similar to the performance of the original F1, which I always was super impressed with when doing fine detailed work. All of this is beautifully packaged in typical X-Tool style and quality, plus a full enclosure for maximum safety. Lastly, the F1 Ultra will be compatible with Xtool's new conveyor belt system for batch processing, where the machine can autofocus and using the integrated camera, intelligently place your designs on the workpieces as they are moving down the conveyor. It's also compatible with familiar accessories like the RA2 rotary module, where I also have some upgrades and attachments in the works. And as I mentioned earlier, it's also compatible with the smoke and fume extraction system from Xtool. 
I'm sure Extool probably has more innovative accessories on the way as well, but they also recently updated Extool Creative Space to a major revision 2.0 with lots of new software features. I covered many of those in a previous video working with the Xtool P2. I'll link to that in the top right corner of the screen right now if you're interested. To keep this video as short and concise as possible, I'll wrap this up here and I can't wait to show you guys the work pieces I've completed in an upcoming video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And don't forget to check out the video description down below for a thousand dollars of savings on the F1 Ultra. And as always, anything else I've referenced in this video, you'll find links to in the video description down below. And don't forget to check out my website, embracemaking.com to support me and my work. See you guys in the next video.